Hey, this is Daniel Grove. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this retro style rocket ship with a procedural and animated star field, how to add volumetric engine thrust, and I'm also giving you a free download of this new PBR texture set that I made for a recent Kid Bash product that I released last week. So let's get started. I'm currently using Blender 3.41. Let's start with the rocket ship body. Shift A, add a cylinder. Let's leave it at 32 vertices. With a cylinder selected, I'm going to tab into edit mode, S for scale, Z, and let's do four. Now if I press period on my numpad, it's gonna zoom into our cylinder, and let's add a few loop cuts with Control R, and I'm gonna use my mouse wheel up to add uh, three loop cuts there. I'm gonna hold Alt while selecting this top one and S for scale. Oh, I don't wanna scale it based on the 3D cursor, so let's change this to individual origin. So I'll scale that down like that. Select the bottom one, scale that one down. We can add additional loop cuts to customize our shape with Control R, double click, and then scale it up just a little bit. We're gonna make a low poly shape, and then we're gonna make it smoother by using a subsurface in just a minute. But we gotta get this shape just right. I'm going to select this top face and press E for extrude. Move it in like that. E for extrude again. And then I for inset. And this is going to be the needle antenna on the top. So E and then S to scale that down really tiny and skinny. Awesome. Okay. Let's make this bulge a little bit in the middle by going back to edge select mode. Alt select this loop and S for scale, just like that. If you wanna make this more of an even bulge in the middle uh, with this edge loop selected, press Control B to bevel it, and S, S, Z, just kinda of getting a nice round shape. Um, now let's add that subsurface modifier in the modifiers tab. And with the object selected, I'm gonna press W and select Auto Shade Smooth. If you don't see this object context menu, you can also press uh, F3 for the search function and type in Auto Smooth, and there it is. Down here, let's grab this bottom face, I for inset, and just make something like that, just to kind of fix that bottom part, make it look nice. Awesome. Let's make our little cockpit bubble window by making a simple UV sphere. So in normal object mode, shift A, add a UV sphere. The default settings should be fine. Let's move it out a little bit on the Y axis, S to scale it down, and we can go to a side view, which is number numpad number three, and move it up here somewhere like that. Awesome. Oh, I'm gonna to go to uh, object view mode. There we go, that looks a little bit nicer. And I have turned on cavity um, with these settings, so it just has a little bit more um Help more shape. I like I like the way it looks. With the sphere selected, press W and do auto shade smooth on this one as well. And let's make a uh, circle of rivets around here. So I'm going to put my 3D cursor right where the sphere is by typing Shift S and then cursor to select this. So now my 3D cursor is exactly where the sphere is. Now I'm going to add another shape in this same spot with Shift A, mesh and cylinder. Let's make it 64 vertices and scale it down to be a little bit bigger than the sphere, R, X, 90, enter. So we just rotated it 90 degrees on the X axis. Let's move it in a little bit like this, and we're gonna add some bolts. We are gonna rotate this in just a minute, but first we need to add some bolts. Let's make this all one mesh with the rivets, so tab into edit mode, Shift A, add another cylinder. Let's make this one eight vertices for a bolt uh, head, and then scale it down. Let's move it out here so we can see it. Okay, so RX90, just like the big thing was, scale it down really small. Go to a side view, number three, and let's put it here at the top. We're gonna rotate these uh, around and make a whole bunch of them. But because I have OCD, I don't like this angle, so I'm gonna rotate it along the Y at 22.5 degrees. There we go. Now, normal octagon orientation, our 3D cursor is still right in the center of the sphere slash cylinder, which is great. So switch to uh, 3D cursor orientation for the pivoting. Shift D to duplicate, R to rotate it, Y to rotate this duplicated piece along the Y axis, and let's do 20, number 20, and then enter. Now, if you did that all right, you should be able to press Shift R for repeat, and it will repeat that combined function we just did, which was Shift D to duplicate, R, Y, 20, enter. And there we go, we got a bunch of nice rivets and this is all one piece. I love it. We should enable auto shade smooth to make it look nice. And let's move it in. And now we're gonna fix this angle. So numpad three, just gonna rotate it. Right there, going to make sure that the angle matches the, the side of the spaceship. And our window's a little too big, so let's size that down. Awesome, all right, cool, we got that. Now I want the top of this to be sharp instead of smooth. So in edit mode, 
edge select, grab this one. I'm going to switch to wireframe mode so I can see this inner edge because remember the subsurface is on, which is basically rounding out this sharp edge into a nice smooth, uh, smooth spot. But I'm, I'm trying to grab this interior ring here. Let's see, right? There we go. That's what I want. So I want these to not be smooth. To do that, I'm going to open up my side panel with letter N, go to item and mean crease. So the crease is basically how sharp something is when subsurface is applied. And that's what I wanted. Now I'm going to add some bolts around here. So to get my 3D cursor in the right place, I'm going to select this outer edge here, shift S, cursor to selected, get out of edit mode because I'm going to make a whole new object, shift A, add another cylinder, keep it at eight vertices, size it down. Let's move it out here. Oops. Individual origin for this one. Okay, I want to rotate it 22.5 to fix that octagonal <laughs> angle. And instead of doing 20 degrees, let's do maybe 30. So tab in edit mode, make sure all the faces are selected of your little bolt here. Shift D, R, Z, 30, enter. And then shift R, R, R to repeat. There we go. Cool. Nice rivets. They're smaller than these, so if that bothers you, you know, you can fix it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll shrink these later, but let's move on. Let's make the windows. I, I like to have some circular uh, windows going down the side of the ship. So let's reset our 3D cursor to the center of our scene with Shift C. Zoom in a little bit. I'm, zoom, I'm using my mouse wheel, by the way, to zoom in. Shift A. Let's make a cylinder. Give it maybe 64 vertices. Flip it on its side on the Y axis by 90 degrees. And let's just scale it out by X and then scale everything down a little bit. So we want it to be roughly about as big as our, you know, spherical cockpit window up there, maybe a little bit smaller. And I'm going to move this down to right around there. And then tab into edit mode, shift D Z. So we duplicated and then we moved it up on Z on the Z axis, click to confirm and then shift R shift R. There we go. Now we got one object with four cylinders in there. And now we're going to um, basically use these as a Boolean and to cut away from the main hole. So with these selected first shift, select the hole and then control minus for me, that gives a Boolean operation. I still have not figured out if that is with an add on added. I'm sorry if that doesn't work. Um, if that doesn't work for you, then you could do your Boolean modifier manually by just typing in the objects here. If that doesn't work for you, I'm sorry. I'll help in the comments down below. So I'm going to select my main hole here and shift D and scale it down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the Boolean on our other hole that I just shrink. See, this tiny hole is inside and it's basically giving us the window right there with the right shape. Um, if you want to save on the polygons that your computer is doing, you could uh, delete the faces out of this inner shape that you don't really see. So I'm going to do that now by tabbing into edit mode um, to turn on X-ray so I can see inside. Alt click that top antenna and then control plus plus a few times to get down right about there and then delete those faces because again, they're inside. They're not even being seen. And same with the bottom half. We don't need these down there. So just delete those. Awesome. There we go. So the only piece that we care about is what is being seen through these window holes. Great. Now let's make the fins or the engines on the bottom. This is a really fun part. Let's start with a basic cube. So shift a cube. Let's move it down here. We're going to make one and we're going to duplicate it three times around uh, the ship. Go back to individual origins. Let's move it out a little bit. Tab in edit mode. Let's scale it on the X to make it skinny. Move it up a little bit and then and on the Y, well, we, we do want it to go inside the ship, so don't do that. So there, we can just move this manually. Yeah, cool. All right, so let's make a fun shape with this. Um, S, Z to scale it down. G, Z to move that down. Let's just use the old move tool here, just because it's a little easier to see. Uh, this is a little bit thick, so let's scale it in on the X again. There we go. And then I want this to go out and up, so... Let's grab this edge in edge select mode and just move that edge up and maybe move this edge down. That looks cool. And let's do a, a loop cut here. So control R, double click. We can move this up to kind of customize our shape a little bit more. Nice. Holding shift, you can select multiple edges for moving them together. 
And yeah, I think that's okay. We're gonna add our engine right here. So let's uh, maybe extrude this just a little bit to go inside the engine. And let's smooth these edges out by using some bevels. So select that, shift select that, hold shift again, select these. And we're going to use the bevel and I'm gonna use my mouse wheel or the plus button on your numpad to increase the segments of your bevel. And that looks nice and smooth. Auto shade smooth, of course, to get rid of those edges. And that looks great. I'm gonna add some circle cutouts here to give it more of a industrial, you know, manufactured look. So shift S, cursor to selected. Now the, now the 3D cursor is right there. Shift A, cylinder. Flip it on the Y axis, 90 degrees. Let's do a big one. And then two small ones. I think that's what I did in my render. So in tab into edit mode, let's uh, shift D, move one up here, size it down, and then move that one down there. Just I don't know why. I just think it's a cool arrangement. And then with uh, the cutter, which is this thing selected, now let's shift select the fin and press control minus, which does a quick Boolean operation. And that looks awesome. Let's apply this so that when we duplicate this around, it's actually part of the geometry. We can delete this little placeholder. And of course, to get rid of these uh, jagged edges, W, auto shade smooth, awesome. Now, uh, we're gonna make the engine. I love making engines. Shift S, 3D cursor to selected. I like to do that before making an object so that if I make any more objects, they will be perfectly aligned with this. Um, that's just my preference and it's kind of a habit I have. So let's make this kind of bulging in the middle, sort of like the ship is. I think that'd be kind of cool to keep that aesthetic. So I'm going to make two loop cuts. I'm going to size them outwards. And this is scaling on individual origin, not the 3D cursor, awesome. Let's make the front one open and let's give it a little bit of a lip. So E to extrude, S, I, E, there we go. And then E again, and let's make this smaller. Ooh, we don't wanna see that block. Let's move that hole up, there we go. And um, I'm gonna make this engine taller because this isn't super big. So I'm gonna hold Alt and select this edge. And if I do it just right, it gets the whole ring. Now Control plus, G, Z, there we go. I like that. And down here, Let's move this down a little bit. I'm gonna do some like edges here. So I, E, scale it. I, E, scale that. And then let's make this a hole for the thrust to come out. E to move that up. Awesome. I'm gonna add a cool like engine cone. I forget, I don't know what they're called, um, but let's do this. And then control B to bevel. And let's make a lot of them so it's nice and smooth. And once we have this piece done, we, we, I just clicked to, to confirm the bevel operation. We can scale this as well. So S, Z, just do two. That looks nice. Maybe move it down a little bit inside the engine. Awesome. If you want to add some uh, like fan blades, you can. Of course, this is in space, so you don't need fan blades for an intake, but they do look cool, so let's do that really quick. <laughs> With face select mode selected, alt click that um, round piece right there, and let's press I, and then I again to get individual inset. There we go. And now we can do uh, use our extrude tools. Let's do extrude individual, and just click and drag upwards. Awesome, that looks beautiful. Nice pod racer engine there, like Anakin's pod racer. And there we go. I'm gonna add a little external fin out here for to, to kind of balance the weight of the design. So let's add another cube, scale it on the X, make it really thin, move it out here, GZ, GZ, scale it. Let's uh, move this face down a little further, move this face up. There we go. And now let's add a loop cut right here, a loop cut right here, and maybe another one down here. Now with these loop cuts made, we can move things around and just give it a nice, uh, nice shape. There we go, cool. I'm gonna move these um, away from the engine thrust like that. Oh, that's nice maybe a little more away so it's not touching the engine parts. Oops. There we go. Yeah, that's that's better. That's a bit big. Let's uh, shrink it in a little bit. So I'm just going to select the whole thing. S, uh, scale it on the Y. Move it in a little bit. There we go. It's a little less distracting. You want balance, but you don't want it to be out of balance by having something too big. Okay, now let's bevel these edges, control B. 
And then I'm going to grab this edge as well, this long, these both these long edges by holding Alt and selecting. And then I'm going to bevel, maybe just with one segment. I'm not sure. Like that. Oh, there's a little bit of an artifact there. You got to be careful when you're beveling. If you over over bevel something, the faces overlap. Yeah, it's that little triangle right there. So just go right before we have that issue. And you should be good. Nice. Okay, cool. It's enough with that. Now, this is all one uh, object, which is great. We're going to rotate this around or duplicate it. But we need our 3D cursor to be smack dab in the middle. So shift C. And every time you do that, it zooms out. I don't know why. That is annoying. I have to zoom back in with a period trick. Select our engine, 3D cursor, pivot, and then use Alt D, R, Z, 120. So Alt D makes a linked copy, which means if I edit this, the other ones will be edited as well. And that's great. In case we want to make any change, uh, they're all, they're, they'll, they'll stay connected. Now, if you want different symmetry, you could do maybe four copies, you know, rotate them by like 90 degrees. Um, let's try that. Because in my original render, I just did um, uh, three of them. So let's do Alt D R Z 90. Yeah, that's cool. It still has a good vintage look and some nice um, factors of two symmetry. So I'll keep it like that. Now let's do the fun part, the texturing and materials. So included in the link down below will be a download link for this uh, PBR material that I made. I did make it for a paid uh, kit bash spaceship product that I put out recently, but this is definitely a freebie. So take advantage of it. It's a really cool texture that I made that has steel plating with rivets. And there's a lot of different maps to use for all kinds of creative looks. And if you add noise into the mix, you can get some great like rust and wear and tear. Um, so I'll show you how to make this material manually from the raw image files that are provided. Uh, so let's start by clicking on our BSDF. Control Shift T brings up a nice time saver that comes from the uh, Node Wrangler add-on. So definitely enable that. And you can select multiple maps and it'll automatically attach them. Most of the time it's right. There's a few things you still need to fix, but uh, this will save us some time. So I'm going to click on a few of these and hold uh, control. I want the height. I want edge. Let's do um, the normal map and the AO map. All right, so it only got three of the images. It never knows what to do with AO, which is weird. The, the Node Wrangler add-on definitely has some things that need to be improved, but I don't want displacement, so I'm going to get rid of that. Instead, I use the height map for bump. So shift A, let's add a bump map um, right actually there after the normals. Plug that into height. Make sure that your bump map and your normal say non-color, which uh, is already taken care of. We've got our AO map here. So I'm going to add a mix. And this is Blender 3.4. So they changed how the mix uh, node works, which super annoys me because every time I make it, I have to switch to color. It's pretty much the only way I ever use the mix node. And I'm always having to do that. So anyway, that's my rant. Um, I'm going to plug in the AO in, or ambient occlusion into the B slot. And A, I'm going to add a red color because it's just a great hot rod color. Let's plug that result into the base color. And let's go to material mode so we can actually see what we're making. Oh, let's change the mix mode to multiply. There we go. So the AO is overlaid on top of the red, only keeping the uh, black pixels. Let's add that, that material to the engines as well. There we go. And let's select this inner hole, which is remember the inside windows, and just make a basic black material. Make the color black. Turn the roughness down so it's shiny. And there you go, you got our windows. <laughs> oh, same for the sphere. Let's apply that black material and then the red material to the rivet thing here. All right, so the UV unwrapping is a mess, but it looks like it's pretty even. It just needs to be scaled and we'll deal with the engines next. So with the uh, whole of the ship selected, let's go, let's change this editor to the UV editor and let's see what it did. So tab into edit mode on your hole, press A for all, and here it is. This circle of UVs is actually the antenna, the top. This circle of uh, UVs is the bottom cap. And then this square part is the actual body. And that's really all we care about right now because the other parts aren't visible. So we're going to play with some scaling to try to get these uniform and not stretched. So with this selected, by the way, if you select one face, you can press Control L. And I do have this button turned on. So anything I select up here will be selected in my viewport, which is very handy. Now I'm going to put my mouse over the UV editor, very important, and I'm going to scale up here. So s let's try x okay x is going that way so i'm trying to get the circles to be circles not ovals right around there it's pretty good when you have a square 
or a circle on your texture, it really helps when you're trying to make things even and not stretched. Now up here, they are getting stretched. Uh, whereas down here they're not. So let's try and just unwrap the whole thing. So with it all selected with A, U, let's try Q projection. And then we're going to use the UV squares add-on, which is free and super handy to fix this into actual rectangles. So turn off this switch and then press A to select all and Alt E. There we go. Now let's see if it did a better job. It totally did. Yes. It's stretched a little bit up here, but that's, that's not as important. We could manually, you know, slide things down if we wanted to. Um, I'm not going to take time to do all that. <laughs> it looks good for the, in the middle, and that's what's most visible. All right, let's check on the engines. The detail here is much smaller than here, and the rivets are much smaller, and that doesn't make sense. So let's select the engine piece alone, press L, and then let's just scale it all uh, inwards to make the textures bigger. I'm trying to match this, the body of the spaceship. So from right here, I can see both parts. Let's just scale it around, try to get it roughly the same. SY to fix that proportion. There we go. That's pretty good. And because these are all linked, it's the same on all the engines. And press L to select the whole thing. U and let's do cube unwrap. And of course, the texture is way too big. So I'm just going to press S. Now the UVs are down here for some reason. Don't worry about that. Um, but I'm just uh, pressing S to scale things to try, try to get things on a uniform scale here. Cool. And then this middle piece looks a little wonky because we got some angles and the faces doing weird things. Definitely some ingons that I don't care about. <laughs> Let's try a cube projection. Not bad. Scale it down to match the size of everything else. Yeah, if you don't like that, you can just make a separate red texture so you don't have to mess with the uh, the PBR on this piece, but everything else can keep the PBR. But I'm going to keep it on for now. Let's play with our materials more because we've just barely touched the surface with what we can do here. Um, we've got red color with ambient occlusion layered on top of it, and our bump seems to be inverted. Let's go to rendered view. I think the bumps are backwards. Yeah, <laughs> so the light is over here. And the indention is there. We want it to be the other way around. So let's go down to our bump and let's invert the bump. There we go. Now it's going outwards. Nice. All right, let's move these textures down here because we're not really going to do much more with the normals or the bump, but instead we're going to play with the roughness map. So let's grab the um, ambient occlusion image node, shift D to duplicate it, and then click open. The reason why is because it brings us right back to where everything already is. So I'm going to get the edge map. And let's plug that into roughness and see what happens. Look at that. The edges are rougher because it's the color black and they're actually shinier. So you may like that. You may want to flip that around. I'm still undecided what, what is physically more accurate, but if you want the edges to be shinier because they've been worn more and the middle faces to be, you know, uh, flatter, you can do that. And of course you can play with the contrast by doing this kind of thing. But remember, the black color is going to be completely reflective. So you may want to change your black to be something less than black, somewhere in the gray. And that looks weird to me, so I'm going to flip that around. Yeah, that's cool. Let's copy this uh, multiply mixed node, put it here. Shift A, let's make a musgrave. Plug it in. We're going to layer this Musgrave on top of the roughness to give it more irregularity. But I like a lot of detail. So turn your detail up and your dimension down to like dot two, somewhere below one. The noise is actually stretched. So let's plug in some um, object coordinates into the vector of that Musgrave. And now things are evenly distributed with the noise. You can see some nice imperfection. That looks really great. I barely even done anything. And I already like that. Um, but it's just a little too shiny and wet. Uh, I don't want it to be that shiny. So let's put another a color ramp right here at the end. And let's uh, just kind of do this number. The bottom, the bottom, the darkest value will go down to dot three. Yeah, it's shiny, but it's not wet and it's not wet looking. Oh, we got some funny UV stuff going on over here. What is this? Let me check that out. UV editor. Huh, I do not know why that's happening because all the vertices look like they're lined up properly. And yeah, that's weird. 
I'm going to try and unwrap this again by using a smart UV project instead. And it gets a little crazy. So let's select these and Alt E to make them squares again. And let's see if we have any irregularities like before. No, it looks pretty solid. But of course, the scale is a little off. So let's um, scale it down a little bit. Not too bad. Okay, that's good enough. So I, smart, UV, smart UV project looks like a better option for that. Now let's do the thrust on the bottom of the engines. I'm going to use this engine right here, and then we're going to duplicate what I make around it. So uh, tab into edit mode. Let's go to object mode. We can see a little better. Grab this underside face inside the engine. Shift S. Cursor to selected. There we go. We got our 3D cursor, which is going to be our origin point. Tab out of edit mode. Let's make a new shape. Let's make Shift A cylinder and move it down. Scale it right around there. And let's just make this a really long cylinder, just like that. The origin point is important. It needs to be right around where the thrust is coming out, like right there. Okay. And then let's also shift A and make a uh, point light and put it down right where the, the, the thrust comes out as well. Give it a nice orangey red color. And let's try 1000 watts to start. So what we're going to do to make this thrust is we're going to use volume. Um, so let's open up our shader editor. Go to Shader Editor, make a new material. You can call it Thrust. Delete the BSDF. Shift A, type in vol, VOL, and do Principled Volume. Plug it into Volume, very important. Not Surface, Volume. Let's make a Gradient node. Plug that into Density. Control T gives us this quick uh, setup with the coordinates use object coordinates which is based on the center point or sorry the origin point of the object which is that orange dot and let's change this to spherical so go into rendered view and we have a glowing sphere right spherical gradient of volume everything else is zero density but the spherical part is one and then you know less on the edge so this is actually catching the light that light point that we made it's grabbing it and it's glowing which is great but we want this to be really long and taper off just like a flame would now technically in space flame thrust and exhaust works totally different because of physics and atmosphere so you know don't get on my case this is a retro rocket old sci-fi art does not care about actual science so Let's get on with it. <laughs> We're going to scale the Z of this coordinates for the spherical uh, gradient. Let's try dot one. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Let's try dot zero five to make it longer. Dot zero two. Don't go past this endpoint because it'll just cut off and look weird. So dot zero three, I think, is pretty safe. Awesome. Look at that. Now, this is basically just a spike gradient. It is a sphere that's stretched on the Z-axis. Um, we can add some irregularities to give it some more texture. So Shift-A, make a mix, change that to color, drop it right there. Shift-A, Musgrave, plug that into B. And now uh, we need to get the object coordinates for Musgrave. Awesome. Let's turn the scale down a lot, like somewhere around there. Detail up, dimension down. And make sure you're using the multiply mode here. So multiply is getting the dark pixels and chipping away at the volume. I mean, put it around half. Get something you like, and there you go. Now we can duplicate this as well as a point light. So shift click both of them. Uh, oh, we need to our, set our 3D cursor in the middle. So shift C. And now we're ready to start duplicating it around the 3D cursor like that. Alt D R Z 90, enter, and then shift R, shift R. Awesome. Look at that. Looks great. Let's switch to EV. There we go. To get better looking volumetrics, you need to go to the uh, render tab, volumetrics panel, and put your quality down to two pixels or four pixels. All right. I want this ship to be even dirtier. So I'm going to layer on another noise on top of what we already got going on. Let's give some more room here. Move those guys over there. This is the final one that'll control our total roughness. And let's uh, mix another one on top. And let's use... A noise texture instead this one let's get these out of the way oops out of the way down there and let's layer the noise texture on top uh, again I made a, I made another uh, multiply mix node here so we're gonna layer on top of this noise uh, we need to get the object coordinates so that the noise is uh, proportional there we go let's turn up the detail turn up the roughness a little bit Awesome. That looks great. Now let's see what this looks like layered on top. I press control shift click on this node to preview just this node. 
This is another Node Wrangler a shortcut that's really handy. And as you can see, it's only we're only seeing the result of the node that we previewed. So we can preview you know, that node, that node, this node, that node. And then finally, the final node, which gets us back to normal view. And I'm still in Eevee, by the way. I'm going to leave it like that because that's the quickest way to render stuff like this. And it'll look pretty good. Um, so the noise texture is being layered on. Let's change this to overlay. See if this gets a little bit more crunch. I'm barely barely seeing anything this needs some more contrast shift a type in co in for brightness contrast and now we can add some crunch to this noise texture because the noise texture is very flat and gray and almost unusable in most cases i almost always have to add contrast so let's preview this output turn up contrast oh yeah that's what i need right there okay let's go back to previewing the final result Control shift click there we're layering it with this fader right here you got to get some light bouncing off the hole just to, to see what's actually happening. Here we go. And we can also shift this up and down with brightness, which is really handy. I like this note. It's, it's way underrated. Great for adjusting noise without a color ramp. Cool. Now, you may not want to layer it all the way on. Maybe that's too much. Maybe you go back to like half or something like that. Just remember, subtlety is key when we're talking about imperfections. And of course, you got scale. I didn't even touch the scale of this noise. Awesome. I'm going to add another uh, mix node up here. So just shift D, duplicate that. And let's make an actual ambient occlusion node, which generates procedural ambient occlusion, uh, basically in the crevices and the contact points in between meshes. Now, if you're in Eevee, you do need to turn that on. So let's turn on ambient occlusion and let's turn on bloom while we're at it because everybody loves some bloom. And now we have some actual ambient occlusion being added in the crevices between stuff, but it's a little hard to see. So I'm going to add I'm going to add a color ramp and just increase the blacks on the ambient occlusion. There you go. This is without ambient occlusion, and that's with it. It's a subtle touch, I know. All right, one more cool thing with these texture setups is I like to give a texture that has random values per each face, especially when I make panel type textures. So let's open another um, node for the image and let's load the random one. Okay. Let's make sure the noodles are connected so that all the images have the same UV data. I think they all do. Oh, this one right there. Awesome. Okay, now we're going to use this to control the color. This node right here is starting with the color of red, and it's adding on top um, the AO the texture that I gave. Let's move these things out of the way, and let's plug in the random values into A. And then we're going to make a color ramp to control. Basically, we're going to change these gray panels, which looks like this into different colors using the color ramp. Okay, so go back to proving the main output. There we go. So it's black and white right now because we don't have any more red. Not yet. But let's change the black point up and red. And the white point can be another color like yellow. And now the random panels are basically going between whatever colors you want. You can add other colors in between. You can make this just kind of like a variation, like a darker, a darker red to give some nice variety on the whole. I think that looks cool, like it's been repaired, you know, parts have been replaced. And you can totally control the contrast between the two colors by moving these things around. Very cool. I like that. All right, let's get on to the procedural star, uh, star field behind it, which will be flying past the spaceship, giving the easy illusion of space flight. I'm going to turn off my grid because I don't need that. I never did in this project. So let's just turn off floor. Shift A, let's make a cylinder. Oh, look at that. I didn't do my habit of recentering my cursor. So let's press Alt G to center that cylinder. Go to individual origin. And we're going to size this thing up huge. So S100. Let's try 100 first. Okay. In object mode. Yeah, it's it's in the background. It's really big. If you can't see this, you may need to adjust your view settings. So with the in side panel open, go to view and just make a huge number, like 1 million, uh, so that your viewport will not end. We're also going to do this to the camera so that it'll still render stuff that's really far in the background. But we'll get to that in a second. So with the cylinder selected, let's split our view again to get a shader editor. Here we go. Make this star field. Shift A, make a Veronoi texture. Shift A, make a ramp. Let's get some coordinates with Control T and then plug that in there and that in there. Let's go to material preview so we can see what's happening. What's going on here is our cylinder is just has these really subtle dots. Let's increase this to maybe 200. 
Okay, and on our uh, color ramp, this is important to make stars. Move your black point up a little bit and then your white point all the way to the left. There we go. Now we got the size of these dots are down to little pinpoints of light, also known as stars. Um, but we've got some shading happening on our star field and that's not how star fields work. So let's go over here, turn down specular and up roughness. There we go. No shading, no shine, just stars. And we're going to scale these stars on the z-axis using this coordinates that we have. So let's try, if, let's see what happens if we lower the z scale. Yep, it's definitely stretching. Pretty cool. Let's do dot zero zero one. Oh, that's a little too much. Dot zero one. That looks good, but it's really up to you. Dot zero zero five. Now we do have some controls here to adjust our stars. If we increase the scale to say 500, we have more stars, but they're smaller. So we may need to adjust the black point over here on our color ramp to make them more visible. There's kind of a weird balance between the Z scale, the noise scale, and the black point on our ramp. Now we want this cylinder to be really tall. So one easy way to do that is just zoom out, move this way up in the air, like really far away from your tiny spaceship down there, and add an array modifier. And make sure it's going downwards. So put one in, oh yeah, negative one in the Z and just add a bunch of counts. This is not increasing poly count barely at all because this is just a basic cylinder, remember? So don't worry about adding a whole bunch of them. Let's get back to the inside of our spaceship. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot to delete the caps on these cylinders. Look, we've got, <laughs> so let's zoom out a little bit. Tab into edit mode on the cylinder. And remember it's way up here on the top. So let's go to the top and delete that face and then the bottom delete that face now it's a clear tunnel of stars awesome okay so i press zero this is my default camera it just happens to be right here so i'm going to select that camera and i'm going to gzz to move it in closer and i'm going to click on my spaceship and for me that drops my 3d cursor you may have to select the 3d cursor tool in order to do that so wherever you click it drops it and then i'm going to rotate my camera based on the 3d cursor so rr to get a cool, just a real easy, quick way to, uh, you know, angle your camera, move it around a little bit. I like angles like this. It just feels like a, a cool spacey angle. Man, I love this ship. It looks so cool. It's a little more chunky and, and squat than my first one. And I'm okay with that. GZ to rotate like this. And let's turn on our rendered view to see where our lights are. Oh, oh yeah, our lights. So our cylinder is killing the light because I'm using sunlight um, or a sun lamp rather to light my scene, but it can't get in because there's a cylinder covering it up. So select your cylinder star field, go to the object settings and scroll down. Now this is an EV, you need to turn shadow mode to none. If you're doing cycles, it's a little different. I'm gonna switch to cycles and show you. You go to the object properties and then visibility and turn off shadow. That will prevent it from blocking the sunlight. So now if I go back to, I'm gonna go back to EV. As much as I love cycles, I'm trying to get used to EV, trying to get better at it. Um, let's turn on rendered view. There we go. So our light is right here and it's kind of, it's not a great angle. We're gonna also add some lights to make this better. So switch to individual origin and let's rotate our sunlight. It's over here, you can kind of see it just floating around. But if we press RR, we can freely rotate this around like that. Okay, let's do that. I like edge lighting. So I want to make this the actual, the, actually the edge light. And point it right at the ship. Oh, that's going to shine off that little porthole. It's going to look really cool. And then shift D to make another sun and just rotate it around the opposite direction and maybe more of a fill light. And let's make this one weaker. So instead of four strength, let's do two. And let's make it like a... 30-ish angle, so it's a little bit softer lighting, whereas the uh, rim light over here is harder, harsher and brighter. So without the fill light, it, we just have a whole lot of shadow. We can't really see our, our model very much. Um, so let's get that in a good position, maybe like right there. We don't want too many shadows, there we go. Okay, so let's render this and see what it looks like. Awesome, looking pretty good. Uh, a few things I would change is I'm gonna change my camera to a wide angle camera and I'm gonna add some silver textures in here to break up all the red. So select my camera, go to the camera tab. 35 is not necessarily wide. Wide is usually below 24 millimeters. So let's just go to like 14 and then GZZ to compensate and zoom in a little bit closer. Get a cool low angle here, scoot it under there. You may want to show off more of the ship, so you might want to do like this angle. I don't usually do side angles of spaceships. I don't know why. 
it doesn't look very good when it's wide, uh, wide angle. So you may want to go back to like 35 if you're doing a sideways view. I feel like it just looks a little bit more, a little more normal. Oh, about a 20, somewhere in the middle. Okay, cool. And then let's add some silver textures to break up uh, the boringness of the red. It's just a lot of red everywhere. Um, so let's select an engine, tab into edit mode. I'm going to grab, I'm going to select this inside face in here, control plus, plus, plus. So now we have this kind of final cone here. And let's make a new material there. Keep the color white, turn up metal all the way and turn roughness down a little bit. Oh, we need to click assign. So once you have the faces selected, let me go to material preview. This looks crazy. There we go. With the faces selected, you click assign. And I realized I never even made this, this red ship hole metal. So select our spaceship, turn up metallic. Duh. There we go. It's got that metallic shine. Awesome. Okay, so we got some silver on the bottom. We can maybe add like a rim of silver up here. Click assign, that looks cool. And on the spaceship itself, I'm not sure if I wanna do silver on here. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, I'm gonna make this, um, this cap down here sharp. Press in, what is it, item, and then mean crease all the way up. There we go. And let's go up here and make our antenna uh, shiny silver. So alt select that, click assign. We have a nice uh, silver antenna, but the top is not, there is a face on top. It's very tiny. There it is. Make that silver. There you go. <laughs> now the whole thing is uh, silver because of subdivision. That's why, that's why that was happening. Oh my gosh, look at these bolts. We got techno bolts. Let's select one bolt, press control L, shift G, and then perimeter. And that should grab all the bolts. And then uh, let's add that silver material in here. Where is it? Let's just name it silver. Aluminum, whatever. There we go. And at the top, oh, they're not silver. They did, they have no material. That's what it is. So give it a material of silver. There we go. Sweet. Included in this texture download is a image that only has the bolts as white. It works as a mask. So you could use that to basically make these bolts shiny and white and clean, whereas everything else below is a totally different material. You can use that bolt mask for that if you want to. Now let's grab the star field again. Let's name the cylinder stars and let's animate it to be flying uh downwards yeah downwards so here is the texture for the stars and let's go to position uh, or location of z and we want to animate this so click on z type in number sign frame times i think negative dot one let's see if negative is the right direction oh that's too fast let's add another zero there still too fast it's like some serious anime lines going on Still too fast, man. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, wrong direction, not a negative. Let's erase that negative sign, positive dot zero 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 one. And they're flying like so. Let's change this one to maybe a three. Yeah, that's cool. Pew. I'm gonna change my view to be a little bit wider. See more of my scene. It looks like rain. You could totally use this for rain, by the way. I'm sure there's a lot of creative ways you could use this for rain. From three to six. I, I just put the scale of the noise to 300 and the stars look a little bit chunkier, which kind of helps that impression of motion down to 100. It's just like very stylized. Like this is straight up anime lines, you know, and that may be what you want, but I like around 300 or higher and that's cool. All right, let's do an updated render. There it is. It looks beautiful, but it's a little too metallic. I'm actually going to turn that metallic down um, a lot. So maybe Dot one, dot two, dot three. Let's try that. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Okay, one last finishing touch. Let's add some compositing glare. Go to compositor, enable or use nodes. Check that. I can't see where my nodes are. So just press the period key in your numpad and it, it, it will find everything for you. Make some room. Shift A, type in GLA for glare. Change this to fog glow, high quality, and let's see what the render's doing. Yeah, it's glowing. We got we got glowing on the, the highlighted parts. Now let's do the threshold down a little bit to like dot five, uh, maybe dot three ish. Cool. Let's compare this to the cycles render. This is always fun. I love going back to cycles and seeing how things look different, better, or sometimes worse. 
I'm going to put this at 200 samples. So this is the Eevee render and this is the cycles render. EV cycles. So look at that. The reflection and the roughness is handled very differently. And I actually kind of like how EV looks better with that roughness map. I could emulate that in cycles. I would just have to adjust the sensitivity of the values and, you know, the noise and stuff like that. Just a little bit, a few tweaks and now we get there. EV also handles bump differently. And usually I don't like how it does it. But in this case, I like the EV one more, which is uh, something surprising I never thought I'd be saying. <laughs> All right, that's it. I think this is the longest tutorial I've done in a long while. If you have any questions, ask in the comments down below. And if I screwed something up or said something wrong, I'm sorry. It happens. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and check out that Kit Bash product that I linked down below because it is awesome. If you love spaceships and sci-fi, you're going to love it. Well, happy blending and have a great week.